Well, some big news here on the uh, morning of Wednesday, January the 27th. Tennessee has named a new head football coach. His name is Josh Heupel. Uh, instant reactions here from Eric Kane, along with Josh Ward on 991thesportsanimal.com. Josh, initially, uh, you know, ballquest.com reported late Tuesday night that Josh Heupel was the emerging candidate, and it looks like it became official early Wednesday morning. Your initial thoughts on Tennessee's new hire? Tennessee fans have rightfully complained about the offense the last few years. Well, the offense is going to improve with Josh Heupel. There's no doubt there. He was a successful offensive coach in the SEC at Missouri. UCF was able to put up a bunch of yards and a bunch of points, and Tennessee will see an increase. How many this year? I don't know. The roster needs improvement. Offensive line will need to improve. There are a number of things that we can get into shortly and, and over time. Uh, with the offensive personnel. But Josh Heupel, as an offensive coach, I think is very proven. As a head coach trying to win at the highest level, which is what Tennessee's goal will be, that's going to take some work. One, he still has to prove that he can do that. Uh, Also, Tennessee's program is in a tough situation right now with the players who have decided to leave through the transfer portal and the scholarship reductions that could be coming will have a negative impact, assuming that happens on the rebuilding effort. Let's see what kind of recruiter Josh Heupel is. So he's a, he's a solid coach. He has a good record. He can put up points. He has a lot to prove uh, in terms of trying to do what his goal will be and what Tennessee's goal will be, and that's to win championships. Yeah, in three seasons at UCF, his offense finished fifth, sixth, and then second here in 2020. So offense has never been the issue. And, of course, the challenge is going to be greater here in the SEC going against the likes of the Alabamas, the Floridas, the Georgias, you know, week in, week out. And, and he yep. knows that. Uh, Josh Heupel was an assistant for two seasons uh, at Missouri. Um, when Missouri put the, uh, the final nail in the coffin of the Butch Jones era back in 2017, he was that offensive coordinator. And so – or he was an offensive assistant, excuse me. And so uh, he knows the SEC landscape, and I think that's a positive. But – and this might be an unfair question to ask, but immediately. I know the roster is a little bit of uh, in flux right now, but – you know, for next season in 2021, how much more improved would you expect this offense to be just with the addition of Josh Heupel? I know you'll have, you know, not his players running his scheme, but uh, it's got to be better than what it was in 2020. Am I right? Yeah, that's part of the reaction is how could it not be better considering how bad it was? I think it'll be better for two reasons. One, I think Tennessee is going to see an upgrade with the coach that's leading the offense from Jim Chaney to Josh Heupel. And also, Tennessee upgraded at quarterback, bringing Hendon Hooker in. And he's not guaranteed to be the starter. He's the guy that I would bet on, though, because he's easily the most proven. Harrison Bailey's played a little, was was not great, obviously, as a true freshman. And then Caden Salter will be a true freshman. So the position will be better. The coaching of the position will be better. And I think that will lead to the offense being better. Will it be good enough against some of those teams that you're – naming there let's see it's it's not the most daunting schedule it is at the top the top teams in the sec that tennessee will have to play i'll go ahead and make a prediction there will be a lot of points in the tennessee Ole miss game that's my lock of the year eric that there will be (laughs) take the take the over i don't know what the number is yet take it when uh, lane kiffin comes to knoxville and lane kiffin and josh heupel have gone head to head by the way with ucf beating up on fau when lane was the head coach there A lot of points were scored by Josh Heupel against Lane Kiffin's team. So there will be a lot of points, but Tennessee's probably going to give some up. And there will be – I'm not saying Tennessee's going to go score 40 to 50 a game. I don't think that at all. There will probably be some games where it might look ugly because if the offensive line isn't great, and it might not be, well, then that's going to affect your ability to be what you want to offensively, at least right away. Long term, if they recruit well enough and they understand the system, then I think they'll be fine offensively. Yeah, two concerns with me right away. And, of course, I mean, this is a risk. Of course, he is a head coach, but only been head coaching for three years at the group of five level. Um, mm-hmm. I know that's what a lot of fans don't like that. I know a lot of fans – you're never going to please everybody. I get all that. But, you know, Josh Heupel brings some positives to the room. But a couple of uh, concerns, I would say, defense. Um, he's an offensive-minded head coach. UCF's defenses haven't always been great under his tutelage, um, as well as recruiting. And, and I know it's tough to – bring in some of those blue chippers, the four and the five stars when you're going up against, you know, Alabama, you know, South Carolina, Tennessee, all the likes, Georgia's of the SEC. So I get that. But uh, 52nd, 59th, and 60th uh, were his classes ranked by rivals in three seasons at UCF. I expect that to improve coming into the SEC, obviously. But I think recruiting will be a concern. Uh, Defense will be a concern. But, you know, Pete Thamel reporting only being paid $4 annually. That leaves a lot of room to go out and find some defensive coaches. 
Yeah, let's see what his staff looks like. He needs coaches who can recruit, obviously, who can coach. We've had that conversation the last year because Jeremy Pruitt made it a priority to go find recruiters, and the coaching took a hit, which then affected the recruiting because the result on the field wasn't good enough. And I would expect that Josh Heupel will be fine recruiting because it's Tennessee, and you, you don't recruit poorly at Tennessee. The question is, can you recruit at the level that you need to to compete with the best teams in the SEC? I do not expect that to happen immediately, uh, but – you know, if you, even if you look at Jeremy Pruitt's recruiting, he did a good job, not a great job recruiting, and he was thought to be an elite recruiter coming into Tennessee. The, the problem is Tennessee faces its own challenges out there in the recruiting trail, and that's before we get to a numbers restriction that Tennessee might deal with from a scholarship standpoint. So th this is going to take time. This is not a, hey, by 2022, year two, you're right up there with Florida and Georgia, maybe in a game. You know, if Tennessee can go score a bunch of points against Florida, maybe you have a shot there. But to beat out those teams to win the East, I don't think that's – a realistic scenario right now but if, if quarterback play improves and offensive play improves you can be more competitive in some of these games that can keep you from losing by 20 plus points as Tennessee did a bunch over the last few years with Jeremy Pruitt as the head coach so I think that's the starting point but it, it's a reminder there is rebuilding to be done and uh, questions I would have with Josh Heupel would probably start with recruiting player development obviously matters uh, well, you know, the, the structure of the program, Tennessee has struggled to find consistency with its strength program that comes back to development. And then um, th there is, there's a lot of scrutiny that comes with being the head coach at Tennessee. Sometimes it comes more quickly than you see at other programs. And that includes this case, because you have a lot of Tennessee fans that are already unhappy with the hire. Now we also quickly see often, including at Tennessee fans hop on board. And I imagine that will happen. You'll hear them at the press conference and, uh, I think fans will get excited, but fans are skeptical here. And uh, with the pressure that can come at Tennessee, Josh Heifel will have to be ready for that. I imagine that's a conversation that he's already had with his former boss and new boss again, Danny White. Yeah, Josh, I'll get you out of here on this last one here quick. But you, you, you mentioned time. You mentioned rebuilding. I mean, obviously, those are you – know, your team was three and seven, just fired as head coach. But also, you just fired your, your former head coach – amid an SEC investigation or uh, internal investigation, as well as now an NCAA investigation that is yet to wrap up. So not only are you rebuilding that roster, you're rebuilding from a wins loss standpoint, you might have, you're likely going to have some sanctions, whether that be loss of scholarships, a bowl ban, potentially both for yeah. maybe one, two years. So uh, he's got that working against him as well. But one more thing, I'll get you out of here. Um, obviously we have no clue what that staff might look like. You know, we'll get some more information here, you know, today, tomorrow, and as he continues to assemble that staff. But uh, Joe Osevet did interview for the wide receivers coach position at UCF under Josh Heupel. Um, I would consider him to, to be probably the more likely candidate to remain here on staff for Tennessee. What say you? I would think that's right. That makes sense. Uh, he's already at Tennessee, so that helps with the hiring process. You know, think about this. Tennessee is paying money to bring in Danny White. Tennessee is paying money to bring in Josh Heupel talking about the buyouts that Tennessee has to pay there. Tennessee's paying a buyout to Philip Fulmer and Tennessee will probably have to buy out some assistant coaches on the staff. Uh, I'm assuming Jim Cheney will be moving on. Well, that won't be for free. Derek Ansley could be moving on. Well, that probably won't be for free. Those guys are making a million plus as coordinators. So there will be more costs there. Now that, that should not keep Tennessee from going out and hiring coaches, but you know, let's see, it's still not the most ideal time to be trying to put a staff together as you approach the month of February. So, you know, let, let's see what this looks like with the staff. But as I mentioned, Josh Heifel needs coaches who can recruit, but coaches who can develop at the same time. And it is a, it is a new start. If Jeremy Pruitt had been hiring coaches, he would have been hiring coaches coming in saying, well, are you going to be the head coach in a year? That's not the question with Josh Heifel. So the support will be there from the athletic director, Danny White, and it needs to be because while the Tennessee job is a good job, it is a job that comes with a lot of challenges and uh, Josh Heifel better be ready for it. Initial thoughts, initial reactions from Josh Ward and myself, Eric Kane. Uh, here is Tennessee Hires, the 27th head coach in the history of the program, Josh Heifel from UCF. Uh, for Josh, I am Eric here on 991thesportsanimal.com.